This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and this is the Barnes & Noble Nook Color. This is their first LCD based e-reader and it has an IPS display which is the same display technology used on the iPad. What's cool about this is it only costs $249 yet you get a lot of quality hardware in there for the mix. Now, we'll take a look at the hardware first. This weighs almost a pound. Definitely a drawback if you're going to be holding this up a lot. You're going to want to rest it on something when you read. But otherwise, it's beautifully made. Nice metal and plastic stuff here. Interesting design element here. Nook button always takes you back home, just like it does on the e-ink Barnes & Noble Nook. It's quite slim. It's got a micro USB connector there for syncing and charging. A charger is included, and you are supposed to use the charger that comes with it because it's a fairly high capacity 2 amp charger. Here's your volume controls here. It does have a built-in speaker. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Headphones are not included, but you can use any 3.5 millimeter headphones you want with this. Power button over here. And the back has a nice rubbery coating. This does not have an easily accessible battery for those of you who like to replace it yourself. And under this little door is the micro SD card slot which is held in place by a little round magnet you can see over here. And the card goes in the slot. It's compatible with up to 32 gig micro SD cards. And it has 8 gigs of storage, so there's only about 5 gigs that are usable in the device. Now, as I mentioned, this is, relatively speaking, a bargain among LCD color e-readers and Android tablets. This does run Android 2.1. You don't have access to everything that you can do with an Android tablet like the Galaxy Tab, though, because Barnes & Noble does intend this to be primarily an e-reader. Now we're going to compare this to several, several other options in a minute, but first I'm going to tell you why I would call this a bargain. Most of the budget Android tablets out there, they're being sold either as tablets or as e-readers, like the Next 2, uh, the Cruise Reader, things like that. They either have very slow CPUs, very old releases of Android, and generally much lower quality displays. This is, as I mentioned, the IPS display, same thing used on the iPad. That's a fantastic looking, very sharp display. The resolution is 1024 by 600 pixels, the same as a netbook, and just about the same as the iPad, though this is a 7-inch screen versus the iPad stretching it out to 9.7 inches. You get a pretty fast CPU in here, you get lots of internal storage, you get really nice build quality and good looks in the mix, too. And now we're going to compare this to some of those other options. Okay, now we're comparing it to the Samsung Galaxy Tab, which I have in this hand over here. This is a 7-inch Android tablet. Now, obviously they're in a different league in terms of price because the Galaxy Tab sells for $600 without contract, and depending on the carrier, you can get it for $400 with a contract. This runs full Android, the Galaxy Tab. This is a tablet, and it's supposed to be used as a tablet. It also has very high-end hardware. It's a fast 1 gigahertz CPU, and it has the same resolution, 1024 by 600. So I would say this is the best competitor in terms of screen quality and responsiveness. While the Nook Color can slow down once in a while, overall it's pretty good. They weigh about the same. The tab is actually a few ounces lighter, and battery life is similar. Side view there. The tab does give you obviously 3G since there is that carrier hookup involved with it. So this is also very nice. And we'll take a quick look at the Nook Reader on the tab. So that's what you see there, whereas the whole Nook experience is integrated into this guy here, but we'll take a look at my bookshelf, or library, for comparison. So that's, that's much more like the desktop application, more visually pleasing, a bit more sophisticated than the Android app can be. And if we take a look at a book, on each of these, You can see they both look quite nice. The Samsung is great because it has that Super AMOLED display that's particularly nice for graphics and stuff like that. Where I, this guy here, I'd say, looks a little bit sharper and a little bit warmer, easier on the eyes for reading. Right now I have the brightness set at about 50% for this. It doesn't have an ambient light sensor control feature that looks like there is a hardware ambient light sensor that apparently isn't being used. I know the Samsung is running on auto brightness. Now we'll compare this to one of the budget Android tablets slash ebook readers. This is the next book, Next 2. This has a resistive screen. That's another difference. Very few of the budget e-readers that are in the same price range as the Nook have a capacitive multi-touch display. So the resistive display you can see is washing out a lot more and is more grainy. This also runs at 800 by 480 resolution, which is the same as a high-end 
smartphone, so you're not going to get the nearly the same pixel density that you do on the Nook. This guy will sell for $199. It'll first be available on the Home Shopping Network, and it is compatible with Borders books. It's obviously a lot more plasticky. The budget ones tend to be just like the, the Huawei S7 that's now available at Best Buy. That's another 7-inch Android budget tablet. Now, for you people who are just looking primarily for an e-reader and not for an Android tablet kind of thing, which really, again, is what the Nook is for, here's the most comparable e-ink alternative. This is the Sony Reader Daily Edition, the PRS 950, that just recently came out. It has an e-ink pearl display, same resolution, 1024 by 600, and it has a touch screen that uses infrared sensors rather than a touch layer. So you can see they're about the same size. The Sony weighs about half as much. Both have very nice build quality. And text looks good on both. And the interesting thing is when you're indoors, the Nook looks incredibly good. It looks bright white. And the Sony Reader has a typical e-ink, slightly gray background, but when you take them outside, they completely do a flip-flop because this one is not so good for outside reading. Just like the iPad, it does fade out some. You can read it, but between the glare and the fading, this guy starts to look like black text on gray, whereas the e-ink reader looks like nearly white page with black text. So depending on where you want to read these, it's going to make a big difference. If you're primarily an indoor person, you read in dim light, then this is going to be a good choice. If you want something that you can read outdoors at lunchtime, on your vacation, whatever it is, then you're going to want e-ink. Last comparison here, both with IPS displays, we have the Barnes & Noble the Color again and the Apple iPad iPad right now is in the Nook applications. So you're looking at the comparison reading experiences and obviously the iPad is a lot larger and a bit heavier and the text density is not very impressive on this iPad because it's running a 1024 by 768 on a 9.7 inch display versus 1024 by 600 on a 7 inch display here so I find the Nook is a little bit better on the eyes not that anyone's ever going to complain much about reading on an iPad if you like reading on LCDs. While we're talking about e-ink displays, I just want to mention, besides the fact that LCDs do tend to fade outdoors and e-ink doesn't, some people find reading off LCDs tiring because there is a refresh of the backlighting on the device, and looking at a bright light can be painful. However, there is a brightness adjustment in here, and you can make it quite dim, and so far, even though I've generally preferred e-ink devices, I've found this very pleasant to read indoors. When you put it on max brightness, it's also quite quite bright, so you can read text outdoors if you don't mind the glare. The other problem is, of course, that it does act like a mirror. In fact, when I turn it like this, I'm sure you can see. This is not a vanilla Android tablet. As we mentioned, this is not just Android desktop and then a palette of icons. This has been heavily customized by, customized by Barnes & Noble, and they've done quite a good job of it. Your desktop here is sh comprised of shortcuts to your reading library. As you can see here, you have three main desktops, which is similar to Android. You can throw things on your desktop. And down here you have a scrolling list of lots of stuff that's in your library. One downer, even though any content that you've sideloaded that say maybe you bought from Kobo Books or the Sony Reader Bookstore because those will work on here too, you can't put those on your desktop. For some reason you can only put stuff that you've gotten from Barnes & Noble's ebook store on the desktop itself. Not the end of the world, but a little bit of a bummer. So these are things down here I've been recently reading and then there's a link to more it has a list of even more stuff, including files I've accessed recently. If you tap the little up arrow over here, you can see you go to Library, the Shop, Search, Extras, the Web Browser, which is the Android WebKit-based web browser, good web browser, and Settings. And this will take you back to whatever book you were last reading. So you can jump out, look up something on the web, and then hit that and just go right back to what you were doing. First we'll take a look at the library view. So here are all my books and there's there's no annoying separation now between stuff I've side loaded and the Nook content right here. This is a book that I side loaded right up here that I was recently reading. So here's my content and this scrolls up and down. And again this is a capacitive display. You use your finger not a stylus. Including if you're taking notes and stuff like that you're going to use your finger with this. You can search your library right here. And you can refresh the list if for some reason everything isn't updating. So it's pretty easy to use and pretty friendly. Book covers, if you sideload content, most of the time you get them, but not always. For some reason, this book didn't get it, but the other sideloaded book that I had did have the cover, even though they were 
coming from the same place and encoded the same way. You can just switch to magazine view, newspapers, my shelves where you can create your own favorite stuff right here. You can have one just for Stephen King and you can have another one for political books, things like that. It's really nice to have some organization. My Files is basically a file browser and you can switch between what's on your internal storage and what's on your memory card. And here we have My Files and then my books are here but really you don't need that because they're already on the bookshelf right here. And any music that I've loaded will also show up in the music player as well and then videos which will show up in the gallery player, the standard Android player. But you can tap in and then take a look at what videos are here. And then, of course, Barnes & Noble has a Lend Me feature where you can lend books for two weeks. If a book is lendable, it will show you right on the screen right here. It says Lend Me, so you know that that's a book that's eligible for lending. The store looks a lot like what you would see if you're using the web browser on your desktop. Here we're loading it now over Wi-Fi. This has Wi-Fi. It does not have 3G. And you can see things that are featured, like Kid, Kids Interactive Books is a new thing for, for the uh, Nook Color, and it'll read books out loud. We recommend it, you can see all, you can browse for books. And just take a look at one category, you can see the speed over Wi-Fi. And there you go. Now we're going to take a look at magazines real quick. And you can see now these are magazines that have been set up especially for the Nook Color. These do not work in the same bland way that magazines have worked on the e-ink Nook or on the Kindle. And we'll show you how those look in a minute. They do tend to cost more, but not always. Cosmopolitan is one ninety nine a month, for example. Got popular science, popular mechanics, popular photography, country living. A whole lot of things that are really way more picture based than some of the magazines that were previously featured on the e ink readers. So let's take a look at a magazine. This is popular photography and this this reminds me of a press display, press direct if you've ever used that, where you get the entire magazine including the ads looks just like the printed magazine. So it's a beautiful experience. In fact, surprisingly, you even see some print registration marks here. And it has an accelerometer, so you can read it in either orientation. Well, I find that these do work better in portrait mode. And that's actually an ad. Stunning looking. So you, you can zoom on these, pinch and zoom, but if you zoom out past a certain point, it may change the page on you. Text is readable like this, but then you see the little article view up here, and that gives you the content of the article in a very readable text-based fashion. So it's really very cool. This is something we hoped we'd see more of in the iPad as a new kind of format for viewing magazines in a much more print-like fashion. And while magazines weren't the most exciting things on the Kindle or the Nook e-ink readers, now it's, it's something I can really imagine replacing my print subscriptions with.